Hi friends, this is Fire on Pop. And today I want to talk to you about something I just happened to stumble into and uh, I think you might find very interesting. Now, a few months ago I was at a show in Philadelphia and uh, backed up, my, my table backed up to these uh, two gentlemen that uh, was sold various military type things and some antique firearms and opened up a whole discussion. Well, bottom line is they were, they had a CNR, Curios and Relics FFL, Federal Firearms License. And they explained to me how that allowed them to buy firearms uh, that fell into that category of Curios and Relics. That's in general rule of thumb is about 50 years uh, or older uh, weapons guns, pistols, or rifles, that they could order them through the mail, get them delivered to their house, they didn't pay tax on it, they, um, uh, they were collectors, and they were able to sell, now you're not supposed to be a dealer buying and selling, but you are allowed to sell to upgrade your, your collection, uh, so they could sell, you know, an occasional gun, and they had a few at the, at the show, not many, um, which they did sell, by the way. Anyway, so I thought uh, I would look into what a CNR, Curios and Relics FFL license was. Uh, so went on the website, and and sure enough, there was uh, downloaded the uh, the application. I mean, uh, I can put links down below, but uh, you're all big boys. Uh, Google Curios and Relics FFL, and it'll pop right up, uh, and you'll get the license from the. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. And um, it's $30. Uh, <clears throat> you don't have to go through a whole a bunch of stuff. Uh, they wanted a, you know, besides filling out, a, you know, just the regular stuff and a hunting license, a copy of a hunting license. And what you have to do is the, you have to comply with your state uh, laws uh, as far as uh, the guns are concerned. So you have to take a copy of the application that you're sending to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the ATF, and send it also to your local uh, authority, wherever you would get your C, uh, CW from. Um, so they would have it on file that you are a collector of antique weapons, uh, guns. So, uh, you know, I went ahead and did this, and, uh, and I'm going to show you a copy of the license right here. I'll, pl I'll plug it in. Uh, they issued me a license. Uh, it came pretty quick. I say within three or four weeks the license came and uh, along with it came a whole sundry of things. Uh, there's a giant book on ATF regulations. Okay. Um, uh, now you have to read this whole thing and memorize it. Now I'm only kidding. But uh, <clears throat> this is uh, what they send. And then I went ahead, and one of the other things they send is this uh, listing of firearms, curios, and relics list. Now this is the listing of uh, the guns that you can purchase under this license. And what you do is, uh, uh, you know, you, you ask most FFLs uh, if they have any guns that, that qualify under uh, CNR. As a matter of fact, the gun broker, you just uh, search in their website for CNR and you'll see the guns that come up that are for sale, uh, that qualify under CNR. Uh, of course, your state laws, I'm going to keep repeating that, your state laws trump the <laughs> CNR FFL. So you got to find out what your state laws are. So anyway, once you get that and you got the license, uh, <clears throat> one of the requirements is to um, maintain a log and uh, I can show you a copy I've got this on Amazon it's a Curios and Relics FFL uh, bound book which is what you have to have it's a bound book and the inside and I'll show you a picture of that close up uh, is every, all the information you need to capture to maintain your log book and now this book has to be available for the ATF at any time should they want to come and inspect it. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, just uh, 
you, you've seen me uh, do a video on it when I purchased my uh, Mauser Bolo or broom handle uh, gun this came out under my uh, CNR now no nick check no nothing because they've already done that that's why they've issued you the license and what you have to do is when, when you're there you have to have a copy uh, and I keep them here right in the back of the book a unsigned copy of your FFL your CNR FFL and you hand a copy of this over to the the FFL you're buying or the other CNR that you're buying the gun from and they give you a copy of their license and you ought to keep that in a file uh, besides logging it into the book and that's how you keep track of uh, and you're authorized to buy it. They want a copy before they give you the, the, the gun, a copy of your license. So uh, I keep that all together. I keep it with me at all times because you never know when I'm going to stop and find something that I may want to purchase. Uh, I also understand that I haven't done that yet, that some of the major, uh, some of the major distributors uh, like Brownell and uh, um, and some of the others I can't think of right now, uh, once you uh, s uh, apply to them and send them a copy of your FFL, they put you on a dealer's list. And when you log in, you get dealer's pricing on all their items. There alone, you can make up the $30 that uh, uh, you spend for the license, even if you don't buy any firearms. But if you follow my channel, you understand that I, I just love... Uh, old firearms like this one. Uh, you've also seen me. You've also seen me do a a review of my Nagant pistol. Okay, now this would qualify also under the CNR. Uh, I, however, when I purchased this, didn't have a CNR. And I got this, and this is on my CCW, so I could carry this. Now, you need to understand that as well, that any gun you get on your, your CNR uh, license, FFL, is for uh, uh, collecting and not for concealed carrying, okay? Two different things. I know in, in my state, every gun that's on my um, CCW is li actually listed on my license. So if anything comes up, they're going to want to see the gun that I'm carrying is on that license. Now this one would be, so I could carry this, but uh, I cannot carry this gun loaded. This gun has to follow the federal rules of being locked in the trunk uh, and ammo uh, locked in a separate container in the driver's compartment. So uh, when I take this to the range, I have to be very careful because uh, this is not a CCW weapon that I can carry around loaded. Okay. Well, I, I just thought this was an interesting deal. Uh, I had never heard of uh, uh, the CNR FFL. I know uh, Fred Hart did a video on it. Now, now that I'm, I'm into it and searching, so you can you can do a search on Fred Hart's channel, and, and he has uh, uh, more information about it as well. Uh, I just think if you are a gun collector uh, and you like antique guns. The CNR is great. It's also great just to get a dealer discount from some of the major distributors if you're looking to buy ammo online, etc. Uh, and get dealer pricing. Why not? Right? So, uh, <clears throat> I hope uh, this was informational. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and uh, go ahead and apply for your CNR license. Uh, like I said, 30 bucks was not... Uh, uh, wasted money because of uh, what I could save in ammo alone buying it over online. Uh, so uh, you can go in Gun Broker and look at the guns that are available under CNR. Uh, you can look any other uh, uh, place and, and find guns that are available under that qualify under CNR, Curios and Relics. Okay, so uh, that's it. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch of details. Um, if you have a specific question, be my guest, ask, ask away down in the comments or a private PM. Um, I'll be glad to help you with it, if I have the answer. 
Um, and uh, enjoy. Be safe out there. This is Fire on Pop. Be safe and God bless. Bye now.